This is a human eye. It's actually my eye. And in today's video, we're going to be studying all about how it and the muscles around it work. This is an ultrasound machine. The same machine that can show us pictures of unborn babies can also give us really dope pictures of the eyeball. This is a CT scanner. It gives us yet another really cool way to examine the eye. So today, using ultrasound video, CAT scan images, and our low budget animation department, this will be the Homeschool Science Club's very first anatomy lesson. And it's going to be all about the human eye. The human eye is incredibly complex. In fact, ophthalmologists or eye doctors will say that there is more distinct anatomy in the human eye per cubic centimeter than anywhere else in the human body. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And the muscles that control the eye are the busiest muscles in the entire body. And that says a lot because there are over 600 muscles in the human body. The size of the eye from the front part all the way to the very back is about 24 millimeters. For some people, it's a little bit bigger. For some people, it's a little bit smaller. And that's why those folks need glasses. This is a drawing of the outer surface of the human eye. And we are going to talk about the anatomy at each point that light passes through it. The first thing that light hits when it hits our eye is a thin layer of film called the tear film basically the layer of tears that cover our eyes. That layer of tears is more important than you might think. It provides oxygen, nourishment, and lubrication to the cornea that it sits on top of. It also helps to wash away bacteria and protects the surface of the eye. After that is the cornea, the first major structure of the eye that we're going to talk about. The cornea is a clear window that lets light into the eyeball. To actually see the cornea, let's go back to the ultrasound. And when you put the probe up to your eye like this, this is what the ultrasound machine will show you. You see, the cornea is so clear, the only way to really see it is to appreciate light reflecting off of the cornea in an image like this. Or you can use the ultrasound. Using the ultrasound machine, you can see the cornea resting on top here and moving to the right and left as the eye moves to the right and to the left. And believe it or not, the cells that make up our cornea are the same cells that make up our skin. They're just aligned and arranged in just the right way that we can see right through them. The cornea is about half a millimeter thick and is shaped like a dome. The shape of that cornea is super important as it plays an integral role in providing our brain with the clear and crisp image to interpret. The next structure light hits is the iris. The iris determines the color of each individual eye. An iris that has a lot of pigment will be brown. An iris that has no pigment will be blue. Again, with my iris, I have brown eyes, but the amount of pigment I have starts to fade around the edges of the iris, which is why the color starts to fade. I think that's a sign I'm just getting old. And if the cornea acts like the window of light, the iris acts like the curtain that decides how much light is going to be coming in. As we go back to our diagram, our light has now gone through the tear film, through the cornea, and is now at the level of the iris. And this is how the actual iris looks on the ultrasound image. The pattern of the iris is as unique to a person as their fingerprint with no two irises being the same. If a lot of light is needed to see, certain muscles in the iris will contract causing the pupil to get bigger. If it's bright outside and not a lot of light is needed, different muscles of the iris will contract causing the pupil to get smaller. And once the light passes through the iris, it then goes through the pupil. The pupil is the round opening in the center of the iris. As light passes through the pupil, it hits our next structure, the lens. The lens rests right behind the iris on a diagram and looks something like this when it is drawn. A CT scan can do a real good job of showing us where the lens is and exactly what it looks like. Again, using an ultrasound machine can also give you a good look at the lens. Unlike the cornea, however, the lens can change shape when we're trying to see something up close or something very far away. Much like a balloon can bend and change its shape. And as people age, the lens becomes less flexible and doesn't focus as well, and is why most people will ultimately end up needing glasses when they get older. The light that passes through the lens then will hit the retina. The retina is a lining of nerve cells along the back of the eye. The retina, shown here in orange, usually lies flush along the back of the eyeball. This is an ultrasound image where you can see the cornea, the iris, the lens, and also where the retina has become detached from the back wall. 
that's terrible and can lead to blindness. And that is very bad. And inside the retina, you're gonna find our light sensing cells called the rods and the cones. Rods are so sensitive to light that they can be activated by a single photon of light, but they can only sense black and white. It's our cone cells that are able to sense color. Red, green, and blue to be exact. And on a side note, if you want to see how these three colors combine to create white, why don't you check out our video on Sir Isaac Newton's color wheel that we made a few months ago. The signals created by our rods and cones are then transmitted down to the optic nerve. Let's talk about the optic nerve. It's our anatomic highway that receives all the signals from the rods and cones of the retina and then sends them to the brain for it to interpret and give us an image that we see. You can also get a really good look at the optic nerve on the CT scan. You can see it coming out of the back of the eye as it makes its way toward the brain. Here's a look at the optic nerve on the other eye. It does the exact same thing, comes out the back of the eye and takes the electrical signals from the retina all the way to the brain. Now that all seems pretty simple, right? Light hits our tear film, goes through the cornea, goes through the pupil and onto the iris, which projects the image onto the retina, which then sends the signal down to the brain using the optic nerve. But to make things more complicated, the signal the brain receives is actually upside down. Do you remember when we discussed the cornea and we said it actually bends the light as the light goes through it? As light passes through the cornea, it actually bends the light so our brain can have a crisp, clear image to interpret. Well, the lens also bends the light, and that's what we're going to show in the drawing right here. Fun fact, the tear film actually bends the light just a little bit as well, and that's why in the morning if you wake up with dry eyes, your vision is a little bit blurry. So here you can see, if we zoom in a little bit, as the light passes through the tear film and cornea, it bends a little bit and then bends even more as it goes through the lens. That bending of the light causes the image to flip as it lands on the retina, which is why the signal our brain receives from the eye is ultimately upside down. Well, that wraps up our first anatomy lesson on the human eye. A few weeks from now, when we return to our anatomy series, we'll talk about the muscles around the eye called the extraocular muscles and how they work to give our eye movement. And don't forget our website has a free worksheet associated with this video and many others that we put up on our channel. We hope you have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you next week.